<laughs> what is going on guys so we are back for another video today and i would like to start this video by saying hey listen i i haven't owned a hamster since i was a little tiny kid and honestly i did not have a chance to do the type of research that i personally like to do before taking an animal in i didn't find that giving the hamster back to pet smart was the best idea since the last time it was bought it literally was left to die almost so I really I just wanted to say that I am grateful for all of the feedback I'm grateful for all of the comments and the people pushing me to make sure that I do this right so I, I just wanted to say thank you but I have listened to you and I have done the research I have looked at Victoria Rachel I've looked at I think some of it was Aaron's animals I have read through hamsters 101.com I've went everywhere I can to figure out exactly what I need to do for this little guy so, we are going to be upgrading this poor little hamster's cage to a 650 square inch enclosure that is made out of a bin. As some of you have told me, Aaron's Animals does a very good job of showing you how to build a do-it-yourself bin-based hamster enclosure, and that's what we're going to be doing today. 650 square inches, and we're going to make sure that we give this little guy gets exactly what he needs to be happy, healthy, and live a long life life. So let's get into this. All right, so we're going to start with this big, huge bin right here. Like I said, this thing is, I measured it out, it's 34 by 18, which gives you a total of 650 square inches. As you can see right there, it's actually, it says it's 39 by 21, which is actually bigger than 600. 50 square inches. Let's do some math real quick. My bad. This is actually not going to be a 650 square inch. It's going to be an 819 square inch enclosure is what we're going to build this out of right here. Also, we are picking up some Aspen bedding. Uh, I also saw in the uh, Victoria Rachel videos as well as Aaron Animals and some others, plus reading a bunch of different uh, subreddits on Reddit as well as hamsters101.com, a, a bunch of places. So Aspen is one of the good beddings. Also coconut fiber that you use in reptile cages. I've already got some of that from when I built my waterfall in my turtle tank. So we're gonna use some of that. We're gonna use some of the KD brand uh, soft bedding that we already bought. That's apparently a good one, as long as it is not scented and things like that. So we're gonna use a, a multitude of different types of beddings. We're also gonna pick up some play sand. Now I've also read that not all hamsters like to take sand baths. So we're gonna give him a sand bath area in the case that it decides that it wants to. And if it doesn't, we'll remove that at a later time. We're gonna make sure we get all the toys that it needs. An eight inch or bigger exercise wheel as as I've read that that is also required for a Syrian hamster because they are a larger breed of hamster. So we're gonna be picking up a big exercise. We chew toys, which we picked up some manzanita sticks, which is a safe, you know, which actually apple sticks is what it is, apple wood, which are safe for hamsters. We've also picked up this three pack of wood balls, which are, they are made from water hyacinth, seagrass, and rattan or rattan, uh, depending on where you're from is how you say it, but those are also safe for hamsters. We are picking up a water bottle. We need to go pick up some Velcro in order to attach that water bottle to the inside of the enclosure. And then we are picking up food bowls. We're also gonna pick up some PVC pipe to make some tunnels in and out of this enclosure a little bit and such. But yeah, let's get into this video. All right guys, so we are now at PetSmart. We just have a few more items we have to pick up to finish our new hamster habitat, right? Yeah. Macaroni? Yeah. yeah. We bought a new cage yeah. because every, every one of you guys says it's too little for him and we know you're right. All right guys, so let me know which one of these is best the 8.25 inch which is the minimum size for a syrian hamster or this big huge one here i don't necessarily know that this big huge one is the right one <laughs> thanks max i don't know that this one is really the right one because he is a big hamster like i'm not even sure that he or she is big enough to really get this thing going so anyway like i said please comment below and let me know which is the best wheel for a syrian long-haired hamster 
and I'm gonna go ahead and go with the eight and a quarter inch but if you guys tell me that this one is better I promise you I will come back and get this one so we're at Home Depot because we're gonna be picking up some metal Kind of, how did you know that? Like, I mean, uh, do you hear this? The, the six-year-old is over here talking about hardware cloth. I don't know where he learned about hardware cloth. So, as Max told you, what are we picking up? Hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. And guess what? Max is absolutely right. So this is, in fact... It says hardware cloth. Hardware cloth. And what we're looking for is the fact that the squares here are a half inch or smaller, and that is exactly what this is. Now we could be using this other one, but it's a quarter inch. And Okay, actually, you know what? Tobin from the 5N family is calling right now. I'm going to have to go ahead and answer this. Let's see. Hey, Tobin. How you doing? Oh, well, tell your wife I said hello. All right, guys, I'm going to talk to Tobin here for a minute. We'll be back. Okay, so we're finishing up here at Home Depot and basically we have some PVC pipe pieces, five inches in diameter, and these are to build an underground tunnel underneath all of the substrate or bedding in the new hamster cage. So we're gonna get this stuff home. Actually, we have one more thing to get, right? Yeah, I, I have what no idea it? what that is. What? Packing tape. Pack? Why would we need packing tape? Exactly. Ugh. A bag of play sand. Oh, that's the hamster outside. can try to take to... a sand bath. Go. Yeah. What's a sand bath? Uh, well, I'm going to give you a sand bath. Let's go. We are back at the house. We have our storage bin with all of our supplies in it, and then we have some other supplies as well. Before we get started with actually putting this together, we need to construct the lid of this. Now what I learned from watching the various YouTube channels that you guys recommended is that really what we should do is we should take this top and cut out a nice long rectangular shape out of the top of this, drill holes around it, and then zip tie some of the hardware cloth, the half inch or smaller squared hardware cloth to the top to give this a nice window over the top. Over here, because this is a clear plastic bucket, we will be able to see through it and see what's going on inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a quick little time lapse as we start to cut this top apart. Okay, so we cleaned up the edges. This is basically everything that came off that inside edge. We just wanted to get all the sharpness off of it. Basically, the edges are perfectly clean. taken care of and clean now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our drill and we're gonna start drilling holes about every two inches all the way around the perimeter of this top. And we will show you why that is in just a moment, but I'm gonna go ahead and get those drilled. All right, guys, well, we are back here and uh, the camera's charged and the drill's charged and everything's charged. So we have finished drilling the holes in this piece of top and basically we went ahead and cut the piece of hardware cloth using some tin snips and that's just simply because it is time consuming but we got it cut down to size here we need to trim it up just a little bit but basically what we're going to do is we're going to take the zip ties and we're going to use these to zip tie the hardware cloth to the top, like so. Okay, so we are out of a zip tie, so we have probably about 20 more that we need, but basically we've gone around and we have zip tied this completely down to this top. Now, let's make sure it fits on the container. Everything's good there, clips there, so that's perfect. So the top worked perfectly, just like it was explained and there were quite a few bin style DIY cages that all use this method for attaching a top and this worked perfectly. So now we're gonna go ahead and get the inside of this thing set up so we can get this guy in here. So we're gonna get the rest of this put together. We had to go get some more bedding because based on all the feedback and the research, apparently they need like eight to 10 inches thick of bedding. So that's gonna put the bedding up to about here. So we're gonna build a tunnel system underneath all of the bedding with PVC pipe, five inch in diameter PVC pipe we have a few pieces of that and that really needs to be the first thing that happens here I'm gonna construct this together by tilting these upwards a little bit just so 
the hamster has the ability to climb up it and it's not just a straight shot. But we're gonna place this underneath all of the bedding in the substrate, giving us access to view through this side, through the side of the, the actual enclosure. That way we can always see inside of this and make sure that little hammy is doing well. So what we'll do is we'll start by moving all of this bedding on this side over just a little bit. So I can place this first piece up in the corner like so. Take this next piece and place it like right here. So we're gonna put a little bit of this bedding down inside of this tube just so he or she has plenty of nice fluffy stuff to play with and sleep on. Now looking over here so we can totally see up inside of there and we'll be able to see whether the hamster is inside of the actual tube. There will be an opening on this side as well as an opening right here. So I have plenty of places to get in and hide and hang out. Now I also bought this little tunnel, this wooden tunnel. This is made out of willow branch and from what I've read, willow branches are perfectly safe for a hamster. What we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this up on the end of this and it'll just kind of hide the opening. All of this will be kind of covered with substrate and only the opening will be kind of showing here. What we have now is this is completely full of substrate and if he needs to get out, he can easily push this stuff out to be able to get out of this hole. Now we're gonna go ahead and cover all of this with more bedding and get this thing put together. So what we have is we've got all of the substrate up inside of here. We have this little willow tunnel that is surrounding this piece of PVC. This piece of PVC is covered by the substrate. We have this little walking bridge, kind of wood bridge, which we have another one of these that is gonna go in here as well. And then we have this little kind of plastic tote that has the end cut out that's gonna be full of bedding. So you can get up in here and then this will be covered. Then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put the exercise wheel on top of this so it stands up about this high, which will give him a place to go. We also have these little balls, which we'll place in here just for some play toys and things like that, chew toys. All right, we're gonna go ahead and attach this water bottle with a piece of Velcro. So we will place the water bottle right here. Now the water bottle is attached to the side. We'll take the food bowl and place the food bowl back up in here as well, like so. Then we'll also sprinkle some throughout the enclosure a little bit. So let's take a look at this. This thing is finished. So we have the exercise wheel. Here's a nice little ramp to get up to that. Here's a little ramp to get up into this particular entrance into the tunnel system. This way to get into the tunnel system. He has some balls to play with. There's actually a third ball, I gotta find it. There's some apple sticks. There's the food bowl. The water bottle is attached. Here's a little house. Hopefully you guys like this a little better. And like I said earlier in the video, this is now 819 square inches, which is almost twice the size that you said was required for a hamster. So let's take a look around the outside. So like I said, you have the wheel, you have the little bridge getting up to it, the entrance to the little house, another bridge getting up to the entrance to the underground tunnel, an exit to the underground tunnel, another entrance, food, water, things to play with. This right here is the entrance into the tunnel, which we're gonna clean out in just a minute so we can see. Actually, let's do that now. So now we can see into the tunnel fully, be able to see where he's at if he's up underneath that tunnel. And um, coming around here, the ball, two different types of substrate, just so there's a, a difference in texture for substrate. Casey decides to burrow down into this, which these are aspen shavings. Hopefully this is better. Let's go ahead and introduce Introduce the little guy into his new enclosure. So let's go ahead and put this beautiful little thing in here. Look at that. He's going straight for the food. Going into his little house, maybe. Look at that. And you're exploring. All right, guys. Well, we are back in the fish room at the moment. And what we're going to do, actually, is uh, we're going to do a positive comment shout out real quick. What do you guys think about that? On the last video, I got a lot of negative comments, which is fine because. Listen, I'm a firm believer. If you're always told you do something right, then how do you ever get better, right? If you're always told that you're great at something, or you're always told you're the best, or you're always told that what you're doing is good, how do you grow? You can't, right? So constructive criticism is key to development and growth for anybody, including myself. I am by no means a hamster expert. And thanks to you guys, I was able to learn a lot very quickly. And hopefully you guys have enjoyed watching us put this together. And hopefully it, you know, it is a much better option. So definitely comment below and let me know what you guys think about this new enclosure. And are there any things that we can do to make it better? 
And I will tell you this, we are not done with the enclosure. After researching this, there are so many possibilities to make this enclosure so cool and build additional enclosures and such. So stay tuned for that. But hopefully for right now, this little guy is in a good place and you know, so yeah, let me know down below. So anyway, back to what I was saying, let's do some positive comment shout outs real quick and let's take a look. Okay, so today's positive comment shout out comes from Layla Ammons. And Layla stated, hey, I absolutely love this video. I just wanted to let you know that they need at least 450 square inches of floor space, which is the equivalent of a 40 gallon breeder. At least six inches of bedding to burrow in, a 10 to 12 inch wheel, and a good diet. I suggest feeding Higgins Sunburst Seed Mix with some Missouri Rat and Mouse pellets. Also, hamster balls are really bad for hamsters because they will bend their backs and can seriously hurt them. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, I just wanted to let you know. Thank you so much for rescuing this little cutie. You and Brenton are truly heroes. Anyway, have an amazing week. Lots of love from Louisiana. Edit. I think you should name the hamster Badger, Finn, or Finley. So, Layla, I appreciate it. Very constructive criticism, very helpful information, and I, I, like I said, I'm grateful for all of the comments. Now, let's take a look real quick through the fish room and look at all the fish. So we're in the indoor pond now, and here is the albino tiger Oscar, the regular tiger Oscar. There's the little baby largemouth bass. There's a little tiny pleco right down there, if you can see it. I don't see the paku, the feather, well, you can actually see the pakus tail fin right there. The knife fish is sticking out right there. The feather fin catfish is under here. Two more plecos. And um, yeah, but everything in here is looking good. We're actually gonna be doing a water change on this thing today. But moving up here to the guppy breeding tank, we have tons of guppies in here. No females at the moment, other than a couple of these little babies, which are not old enough to actually get pregnant at the moment. So we're good there. Moving over to the black water tank. Here is the little paradise betta who absolutely loves to interact with you through the glass. You have all of the neon tetras. Back there you have the hill stream loach who's chilling, but everything in this tank looks good. Now moving down to the turtle tank. There's a little bit of green algae growing there that we gotta clean out. There's one of the neurite snails. There is the little pink belly side neck. She's poking her head up. Over here we have the snake neck who's chilling, running around. And then back in the corner, right there, you can kind of see, oh, there it is. There's Elon, the musk turtle. But everything in here is looking good. We're gonna do a water change on this guy today as well. Moving down here, we have the betta breeding tank, which there's no breeding going on. Somebody made the comment that maybe the betta is too old and will not produce a bubble nest. And I'm starting to think that because he is not producing a bubble nest. So we may be moving this female in with another male later on to see what we can do. Here are our last two rescue bettas, which those are gonna find forever homes very soon. Somebody made a comment on my last video that there was no bumblebee catfish in this particular tank. And I would like to show you that there are actually two bumblebee catfish in this tank. So, not really sure what you're talking about, the fact that there was no bumblebee catfish in there, but there's actually two. So, anyway, let's go take a look at the rest of the tanks. All right, well, before we get into this tank here, this was Max's, his Valentine's box. This is what he wanted to do. If you notice, we have a little uh, launch ramp with a, a angled grind pole here and a half pipe, which I thought was really cool. Max's idea I obviously helped him build it, but yeah, really cool. Anyway, so here is the escaped betta tank with this show quality betta that's in here, which everything in there is looking good. Moving over here, we have the Rasbora tank, which is really crystal clear. As I said, this Marine Land canister filter is what's keeping this thing so clean, which I did not put the link in the description on the last video, but I will definitely do that in this video. So anybody that's asking, which there's a lot of comments about it on my last video, I will put that in there today. All right, to the 100 gallon. If you notice, I put one of the, another one of those Marine Land canister filters back here, and it is keeping this tank absolutely amazing. Also, I went ahead and modified, oh, actually, I can't tell you about that. I have a video coming out on that. I have not put that video out yet, so I will show you that later. But if you notice, the sand in this thing is perfect. There is nothing, no remnants of anything down here. And in a video coming up, I'm gonna show you why that is and what I've done to keep the substrate so clean. But everything in here is looking good. Also, based on your recommendations, the fact that these are so bad, I'm taking this back. 
it's going back to Walmart. We're not going to be using these anymore. Okay, well, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video today, and hopefully, like I said earlier, this enclosure is much better for this little guy than the one before. If you could, just drop a comment and let me know if there's some changes that we need to make to that, if there's any further recommendations. I, As you can tell, I listen to you guys. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to be forceful. You can just state what you think, and I will go research it, and I will apply change, because that's just what I do. Like I said earlier, you cannot grow if you don't get constructive criticism, so I am grateful for the constructive criticism. And before you go, if you have not liked this video or you have not subscribed, please do that now. As well as, make sure you follow us on Instagram. What? You're doing my job. Oh, well, little Max Robert wants to give you this speech, I guess. All right, you ready? If you haven't subscribed to our channel or follow us on Instagram, do that now. There you go. What should they do? What, what should they do? What you should definitely not do is be more like Brenton. Like, seriously. <laughs> definitely don't be more like Brenton. No, I'm just kidding. Brenton's a good kid. So, like I said, if you, or actually, I guess, like Max Roberts said, if you have not followed us on Instagram or you have not subscribed, please do that now and listen. We will see you next time.